welcome to Lately Coffee with Mary and Chris again. He's back for the third time. We're talking about relationships and today we're going to share some of our marriage hacks. So the things that made our life and our marriage a little bit easier over the past 11 years. So we'd love to share those with you. Um, but before we do that, Chris is going to share with you um, one of the songs that I am loving lately. So I will let him introduce that for you. Yeah, so we've been married about a decade and needless to say, there's a lot of things that we didn't know when we said I do. So um, this song is called When I Said I Do. Um, it's a little more lighthearted. I hope you enjoy it. You forget to gas up the car. It's my job to fill it. When you see a bug on the wall, you tell me I have to kill it. I remind you every time you leave our home to grab your wallet and your phone. I never knew I'd have to clean your hair out of the shower. But when you said that we had to talk, it meant for at least an hour. There were so very many things I never knew. I said I do Thought I had all the answers Until you came along I Changed all the questions I've never been so wrong But none of that could change The promise that I made that day to you My love is just as true And if I never knew I said I do Every time that you start to cry I get you laughing You're the one that comes up with a dream And I say let's make it happen When we disagree I'll always let you in I do it all over I prefer to travel only where the road is Since you love the sights, I guess I'll stop and smell the roses In this compromise, we each fulfill our role That's what makes two parts a whole Thought I had all the answers until you came along and Changed all the questions I've never been so wrong But none of that could change The promises I made that day to you My love is just as true And if I never knew I'm ill-equipped to you flip the script But I get to love you another day Break down my pride, stand by my side I wouldn't have it any other way but honestly, I knew it all along This challenge makes me stronger I won't fight it any longer I thought I had all the answers And you came along I changed all the questions I've never been so wrong, but none of that could change the promises I made that day to you. My love is just as true, even if I never knew when I said I do. That's why it's so funny to me because he really does have to remind me to get my keys and my wallet and Every all time. my things. Every time. <laughs> so, 
Yeah, I don't know if you're like me. You probably are much more responsible people than I am, but I um, yeah, can lose a lot of my things. So I'm so <laughs> thankful that I have a husband that does those things for me and gets all the hair out of the shower. <laughs> yeah, yeah, husbands, it's always your job to do the nasty stuff, whether you like right. it or not, whether you know it or not. Yeah, that's your job. I don't know well, if your wife told you, but... The grosser it is, the more manly it is in, in your wife's eyes. <laughs> yeah, it's true. The bugs, everything. Mm -hmm. So we're going to share with you some marriage hacks, some things that could help make your marriage less difficult, right? Mm -hmm. um, so one of our top things that helps our marriage to be light and playful is literally to play like you did when you were a kid, mm -hmm. like just play. So we, I love to dance. I will dance and feed. And so we will have dance parties in our kitchen often, like every night almost. And we just crank up the music and we just dance and we just have some fun. And he and doesn't it looks dance. Just like and this. I just be crazy. And I'm like dancing everywhere. I got my coffee. And the girls think that I'm crazy. And it's fine because we all have fun. And he laughs at us. And then he'll get in and he'll dance too. But if you don't like to dance, do anything silly, crazy in your home. Build forts. Just play. Be a kid. Mm -hmm. Let your kids see you be crazy because mm -hmm. that really helps them to relate to you and just to enjoy their childhood, right? We just mm -hmm. want to have fun. And our dance parties are not like. Tuesday, we're having a dance party. This is no. just like it happens. Yeah. Impromptu on the spot. Right. Don't be afraid to be a little spontaneous, especially with your kids, because mm -hmm. they love it when something just breaks out like that. Yeah. Um, so dance parties, good, yes. good stuff. Then we also um, like to do, uh, as much as we can fit it in, um, we like to do a game night. Mm -hmm. And if you're like me, and you like uh, board games about as much as like getting a prostate exam, <laughs> then you, you still got to do it because we, we still play board games because our girls like them. But, yeah. but we, they also like to play um, like hide and seek or tag or yeah. something like that. So like, like Mary, we'll, we'll play sardines with the girls where like yeah. when you find the person that's hiding, you hide with them and everybody comes and like and ends up with a big clump, clump yeah. of people. They and are the... terrible at this game. They're so loud. <laughs> but they, they just love laugh it. and cry. And we just can find them in like a second because yeah. they're all laughing because they're all in a huddle somewhere. But they love it. They yeah. really do. Um, and then terrible. and then other things like going outside, going on walks, yeah. Um, yeah. going on hikes, mm -hmm. playing, playing tennis. <laughs> Um, the girls aren't to the age that they can play yet, but we, we'll go out and play tennis, and we might not be good, but we'll have fun doing it. Mm -hmm. And we'll go play basketball and play soccer and throw the football around and throw a frisbee yeah. around, just something active. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's a lot of fun. It gets you exercise. And yeah. also, don't be afraid to laugh once you're married and mm -hmm. maybe even flirt a little bit because mm -hmm. you probably did it when you were dating, mm -hmm. but sometimes it gets to be like a, a lost art in a marriage. Um, but, it, you know... A little bit of flirting goes a long, long ways, and and even when you're not there, you got a cell phone. I'm, you, I mean, keep it appropriate, you know. But but send a little flirty text, maybe a little inappropriate. That's right. It's it's okay because you're married. Keep it real. Just keep keep it, it real. real. You don't know what your wife or your husband needs, mm -hmm. so just be available to like that flame, right? <laughs> Um, so another way that we like to um, keep our marriage thriving is by taking breathers. Mm -hmm. So I am a stay-at-home mom and we have four children. So any time that I can get out of the home by myself and do anything, literally anything, like walk mm -hmm. around Target, walk around the grocery store, it is like a vacation, like a mini it vacation. It doesn't take much. It does not take much, but it feels so like, ah, it's just so nice to not have anybody pulling on your shirt mm -hmm. or yelling your name or any of those things so if you have um, a way to fit that into your schedule where your husband watches the kids so you can go grocery shopping or you can go just sit and have coffee or you can sit and have coffee with me like we're doing right now um, or just meet up with somebody whatever you need to do to just be alone and to feel human and like yourself do that that is huge for your marriage because if I'm not doing that and I'm not taking time to just invest in what I need then I can't give him anything and I can't give my family anything if mm -hmm. I feel completely drained so do the things that will refresh you and that will bring you life um, yeah that's good and then we also you know it doesn't it doesn't always work mm -hmm. but as much as feasibly possible try to set up a weekly date and we found it's best to kind of pick a day that it generally works because you know usually when your kids get older they, they have soccer or gymnastics or you know volleyball or whatever it is like some kind of it's team sport type thing right. and that takes up a night of the week so we, we, we like to pick Friday nights because that's the night that we're free and we try to do a date night Mm -hmm. Um, and, and, you know, we're, we're, uh, we're limited time and we're limited finances. So you got to get a little more creative, but here's the, the beautiful thing is, you know, it's, if you everybody had the money and the time to go out a, on a fancy date every Friday, that'd be great. But yeah. when you don't continue to date, 
you can have a date in your own house. Mm -hmm. Like it, 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 all it takes is you to do something to, to make it feel less like an average Thursday and make it an event mm -hmm. in your life. Yeah. So, I mean, it can be as simple as going and get a bag of popcorn and then sitting on the couch in your own basement watching a movie. Yeah. Or, I mean, there's, there, you can have tea together or whatever if you want. Like something, something where it's just alone time for right. you guys to, to kind of reconnect. Yes. Make it so that you don't feel like you're roommates and you're just like mm -hmm. doing laundry and doing dishes. We don't ever doing... do laundry, so I don't no, know what she's talking about. We don't do about. dishes. We don't do laundry. all of like the normal house care things. Put those aside and just enjoy each other. Enjoy mm -hmm. having a spouse that you can love. Um, another hack that we have learned and have tried to implement is an early bedtime. Oh, mm -hmm. this is key. Once you start having kids, so before you have kids, you can do whatever you want. But when you have kids, like you really have no idea how freeing it is to put your kids to bed like early like at seven or uh, maybe you're even crazy and you put them to bed at six we couldn't do that but seven feels really early to us usually they go to bed at eight but if we put them to bed at seven then we have the whole night like that's why we're able to do this right now is because those kids are in bed and they are going to bed early and then we have the rest of the night to enjoy so you can have a date night any night of the week when you do that really mm -hmm. like we'll just hang out and read books or do whatever we want um during the week but that also create space and time for you to do the one thing that unifies you more than anything else we could tell you. You know that one thing. If you have time in your schedule to do that one thing that unifies you more than anything else, you really have to create space for that, especially as, bu as busy parents with kids. If our kids just roamed our house all night, we would never have time to do that. And I would be exhausted and so would he. Mm -hmm. So it is huge to create space and time for you to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. And then also going with the date theme, um, taking breathers, it, it, obviously it's important to take time apart. Yeah. Like Mary said, she goes out anything, get to get out of the house as a breeder. Mm -hmm. I like to go hunting because yeah. with all the four girls and the estrogen in the house, sometimes mm -hmm. I just have to get out mm -hmm. and breathe. Yeah. Um, but also, um, every once in a while, fellas, you can do something that your lady doesn't like to do or that you don't like to do, excuse me, that your lady likes to do. You can go shopping with her mm -hmm. and have some time together if you have, you know, grandparents or somebody that, that's nearby that can watch. Um, mm -hmm. And it can be almost a free date because you're spending time together. She loves it. She does something that she wants to do. Mm -hmm. And Mary's come hunting with me. I know that's not her favorite thing, but mm -hmm. just time alone together. Yeah. It's, it's kind of a double whammy that way. Yeah. Um, but uh, the, 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 one of the last things um, we want to talk about is uh, whose team are you on? Is it team me or is it team we? Mm -hmm. Okay. Just like as a, as a prevailing paradigm, it's not just me, mm -hmm. it's we. And if I'm making decisions for me at the expense of her, mm -hmm. then that's a bad decision in a marriage. Yeah. But it doesn't mean that you have to always do things you don't want to do, but it has to be something that you both want to do. Right. Um, and, and going along with that theme, um, you'll never get more out of a marriage together than the time you spend alone with your creator. Mm -hmm. So spend time with God mm -hmm. on, on the regular, yeah. both of you individually, yes. um, because if I, it's hard enough for me to play the role of a husband. Mm -hmm. It's hard enough for her to play the role of a wife mm -hmm. well, but it's impossible, utterly impossible for me to play the role of God in her life mm -hmm. and vice versa. Yeah. So make God your God and, mm -hmm. you know, second place pays better mm -hmm. in a marriage. Yeah. If God's your first place, second place pays better. Um, <clears throat> but definitely make that a priority and, and that's an investment yeah. in you and in your marriage. Yeah, that's literally the best advice we could give you is to make yourself available to God and spend time with him and get mm -hmm. all of your needs met within him without looking to your mate for that. If I look to Chris for my security, for my, um, I don't know, for my everything, for my vulnerability, if I look to him to fill everything that I need in my needs, I would be so lacking because he is not meant to fill those things. He's not meant to be able to be my everything and only God can do that. So if I can get my joy and my strength and everything from the Lord, then when I come to Chris, we're co- co-heirs we're coming together working towards what god has for us but i'm not looking mm -hmm. to him for my strength or for my joy or for my purpose or for my mm -hmm. value all those things come from the lord um, but another thing that has helped our marriage um to stay on track and um just have the right mentality is to have an us 
over them as in our children. So we always put ourselves as a marriage before we put our children. And that might be super counterculture and that probably might rub some of you the wrong way, but it's biblical to put your marriage before your children because if we allow our children to dictate everything that's happening within our home, then slowly but surely our relationship starts to crumble and it starts to get mm -hmm. put on second burner and we end up not <clears throat> doing the things that will help to help our relationship thrive. So. And, that, and just to clarify, when she says us mm -hmm. over them, that's not me over them. Right. That's not her over them. That's us together. Mm -hmm. It goes along with the other one. Us together right. is, is more important than them. That doesn't mean they're not important. We would die for them. Yeah. We would give up our life for them. Absolutely. Um, but, but there's no better gift that you could give your children than to know that mommy and daddy love each other. Yeah. And when you're doing that playfulness and that flirting and all that, like, Stuff that make might make your kids go, ew, mom, dad. That they real they might see it and they might act like it's gross, but inside their heart is warm when mm -hmm. you're doing that. Because mm -hmm. there's no better thing that you could give your kids than a happy marriage between mm -hmm. yourselves. Yeah. So, yep. Yeah. So those are our hacks. Those are our hacks. Hope they're helpful. That's right. And I will see you next week um, with just me. It'll just be coffee with me. I'm so glad that Chris joined me these past three weeks. It's been a blessing to me to get to um, talk about relationships with him. That is a passion of ours. We love mm -hmm. getting to share um, things that, God's have that God has taught us and ways that we can help other people. So hopefully it's been helpful. And um, I will talk with you soon. Bye-bye.